Welcome everybody to Mindful Social this week. We've got Ola Agbamoni, and hopefully I didn't mangle your name. No, um, good. Well done. Oh, good. Uh, you know, I was introduced to her through an ebook that she uh, has created, and we're going to talk about in a little bit. And I've also been following her on Twitter. And if you're not following her on Twitter, you need to go do that because she shares some really great stuff. And, you know, it's about empowerment and really understanding your market and yourself, most importantly. And that's what we're here to talk about this week. So, Ola, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh, about me? Oh, I have a long yeah, story. Yeah, about you. How, how long have you got? So, um, <laughs> I, so despite, you can all see me, so despite this amazing youthful face, I'm actually very old. And I, I was reminded of how old I was the other day by my kids. So I'm, I'm 55 in September. So I've been around a long time. And um, my background is in um, actually the public sector. I spent 25 years of my life working in the public sector, being a public servant, dealing with regeneration schemes, really big um, kind of place-making regeneration schemes, a multi-million pound budget, and, and trying to change um, what was the decline because of, you know, deindustrialization and all that kind of stuff. So I did that for a long time. I worked a lot with people, worked lots with different organizations. And it got to 2010, and, you know, I, I think it was a year before I was 50, so it's probably a midlife crisis that I was not admitting. And I thought, okay, I'm making a difference, but is this what I want to do for the rest of my life? Is this the kind of difference I want to make? And by, by that time, I'd, I'd done a couple of things. I'd become an interfaith minister, so really looked to grow my spiritual self. I'd done a lot of NLP. Um, I was a manager, so I worked a lot with people, especially women. And, and it kind of thing all came together. And I think, you know, I, I really want to change the world. I want to make things different for people. I want us to be out there doing different things, treating people like they matter. I, I think I need to be more in the personal development kind of platform so i initially left to do that but because of my background in regeneration you know doing places doing inward investment and market and i did so much work with small businesses over the years i kind of moved the two together and, and we ended up with what i've got now which is elan m which is really about doing two things empowering women to stand in their power because i really do believe that women are the change not so much that men aren't but i just think that the balance between the feminine and the masculine energy in the world is totally skew with and what we need is more feminine energy. And men can bring that too. But I think because of just historical disadvantage and where women are, that women need a, um, a boost for that. Particularly, mm. you know, a lot of women I talk to have what I call imposter syndrome, where you <laughs> how successful you are, you always feel imposter, you know, like you shouldn't be in the room. And so it's a lot about dealing with that. But also in terms of looking at how we are as businesses in the world, you know, Businesses aren't separate. We've seen to, over the last, I'd say in my lifetime, in the last 20 years or so, I'd say it's Margaret Thatcher's fault personally, but anyway, um, <laughs> her and Reagan, we changed the idea that businesses were separate and, you know, that, that they actually did something other than be part of the community. If you look back into history with the great industrialists, or like the Roundtrees and the Bournevilles, they actually recognise that businesses are the community, that without what they bring, without the, the wealth that they create, we have no community. So very much about mm. creating like you, mindful, heart-centered, empowered businesses. We call it a business hug. You know, hearing, understanding, and giving back incredible value to really just change the world. To so say, actually, we don't need a world like this. And if the politicians can't do it, we as entrepreneurs can. Because we, have, we hold that power. We can do things differently. We can make the marketplace a different place. So that's very much what it's all about. And it all comes together in helping people to market themselves effectively like you say mindfully you know without that me me grab grasping waste of the planet's resources <laughs> isn't it approach we have one can you see me <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, just, I, just, <laughs> I love flavors life i'm just saving the umbrella i might have to put it down because <laughs> it does seem to the wind took it there you go just there you go the <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't wait to see the recording of me doing it <laughs> well, I think it's really interesting your your model about hug and how that really kind of speaks to a lot of a lot of women's values about the way that they run their lives, but not necessarily their businesses. And you're right, we do tend to get imposter syndrome. We do tend to maybe give someone else the back seat when there's really no need to do that. And you know, being uh, a small business, 
really it's more about bringing a lot of small businesses together and using the power of the crowd to change the world rather than trying to do it in a big industrial sort of way. Does, is that kind of where you're going with this? Oh, absolutely. That kind of whole thing about the one voice singing in the darkness. All it takes is one voice and everybody else can join mm. in. And very much about that. And, you know, my, my biggest vision so far is to have an international business hug day, a day mm. that we all businesses sign up and do nothing more than just say, actually, today we're going to hug our customers. You know, we're going to hug our communities. We're going to hug our employers. We're going to hear, understand and give back incredible value. Because I always say, Everybody expects a good service. Everyone expects things to be nice because, you know, why would you pay for something that was rubbish? You know, why, why do you, no one goes to work to be abused by their manager. You know, their communities aren't set up so that they're decimated. So everyone wants something that's good. But what you want to do is give something back that's incredibly good. That's the one over the other that makes people sit up and go, wow, because then they're going to want to hug you back. And, you know, everything that you're about, I'm about, is really about that giver's game. You know, you, if you give, you can't possibly lose because you always get something back, even if that's just the feeling in your heart. And so it's very much about, like you said, coming together as businesses so we can all do it together, you know. The power of the crowd, <laughs> strength in numbers. I said, you know, do you remember that story when you were, well, I don't know whether you had it, but over here there's this book called um, The Big Fish. And there's a story about, these little fish that kept getting eaten by the big fish. And then one day they decided they were gonna swim in formation. So they looked like a big fish. And so every little fish swam together. And I can still remember the illustration in the book and it was like all the fish. And then they got one fish that was a different color to be the eye and they swam together and they frightened off all the big fish from the pond. And I was like, this kind of thing, swim like a big fish. You know, you can come mm -hmm. together and swim like a big fish. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great story. I don't think I've heard it before. I think there's a huge amount of power in the crowd and also that, you know, that kind of collaborative support is also really important. And, you know, it sounds like that's something that you're really building with your project. Oh, why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about the ebook that you just released and what those seven momentous moments are? Right. So I've got them here. <laughs> <laughs> so, my ebook is also um, 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 actually a proper book. So you can, can you see that in the box? Yeah. Thank you. Oh yeah. Yeah. So um, so um, so one of the things I wanted to do is I released it as ebook, but I also wanted to have it as a package that you can give people because it's a, it's quite an involved process, and I have to get you as a guest on my show, so you have to do your moments because mm. you know, everyone. I've done this this process for years now with lots of different women. And everyone was says to me, oh, Ola, it's so profound. You, you know, you think, oh, that's simple. But when you really get into it, it really does open you up to your, what I call your self-inspired success. You know, what you know is inside you. Because often when we look at all the really big people who are famous and everyone points to them, says, oh, you could be like this person, you could be like that person. And that little voice in your head says, hmm. But what was going, but that was them. That was, wasn't me. It was actually, mm. if you go back into your own life and look for your success moments, look for the things where you overcome, and I'll, I'll tell you what the moments are in a minute, um, you can't argue with yourself because you've done it. That was you. That wasn't somebody else. That, you know, you can't pretend you were the imposter because you've actually done it. You've, you can anchor it. So the seven moments are, I knew I should, this, this is the benefit of a desk. <laughs> <Got one. laughs> so moment number one, can you see that? Mm-hmm. Is a moment of self-discovery, yeah? And so self-discovery moments are where you identify your higher purpose or experience a sudden knowing of who you truly are. Um, and it's often they're associated with spiritual awakening, but they don't have to. Sometimes you can just discover who you are um, in, in that moment. You know when it happens. You know that actually maybe I wasn't on the right track and suddenly, you know, something happens, something takes you to a different space and you know who you truly are. So that's moment number one, so a moment of self-discovery. Moment number two, there you go, is the moment of clarity. And these moments are to do with finding your passion or identifying your life's work. Different from the spiritual awakening, but I, I, I used to, before I did the cards, I'd every so often get a moment of clarity where you suddenly knew, you suddenly knew what, the, what you had to do and what it just became very clear. And sometimes mm. these are triggered by other people or they can just be triggered by events, but and they, they don't happen once in your life, but if, you know, they, they, they can repeat, but when they happen to shift you into the right direction, you know that that's a monumental moment. So that's a moment of clarity. So moment number three, me and you love this one, action, no change without action. <laughs> so these right. are monu monumental decisions that you take and the consequence of it. You know, sometimes it's, 
it's really apparent that that one action that you took is just taking your life in a different direction. So that's moment number three. So moment number four, and moment number four is always four, because I usually randomise the moments and get people to do them in whatever order the cards t shuffle and turn out for them. But four is mm. always in the middle, because moment number four, can you see that? Is a moment mm -hmm. of darkest despair, yeah? And so it's sandwiched in the middle by the, the good stuff either side, or the positive stuff either side. And these are associated with grief and loss, although it's not necessarily the loss of a person. It could be the loss of your self-belief, your loss of a job, a loss of income, loss of something that's really you know, it's knocked you into a moment of darkest despair. And why I think these moments are the most powerful is because once you know that you've come over this, you know, you, you know, so you've got seven moments. This was one in the middle. There's three before, three after, and you, you, you cope with it. You dealt with it. This, this is, this is what you've achieved by coming through this moment, recognizing the learning in it. So it, it really does anchor that you can do this. And I am, um, when I used to do the show with people, so after they did the moments, so I'd always ask people three questions. What would you do differently? And they'd say nothing. You know, it's like there was so much learning in what I experienced that even though, you know, I'm, I've got quite a dark moment of darkest despair. But, you know, it made me, it made me who I am today. And, you know, it's, it's, it's pain while you're in it. But, you know, like they say, the night is darkest before the dawn, isn't it? So, yeah. Anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough for that one. So, my moment <laughs> There it goes again. <laughs> I'll leave it. I think the sun's setting a bit now. So mm. passion and connection. Yeah, moment number five. I just love this illustration. When I got the artist to illustrate them, I said, I, I, I visualised it and I thought, yeah, it's that kind of connection to someone, the tango, you know, that really deep connection that you have with another being while you're doing something. And so they're not necessarily a, um, your life partner, but they're moments of where you meet a significant person in your life and they have an impact on your life. So mm. it's... um. As I said, it doesn't have to be the person that is your soulmate, but it could just be someone. And the person who came into my life and really impacted, you know, wasn't my soulmate. It was another woman. And it's just her experience. And I can, even today, I think I haven't had another passion and connection moment that was more profound than the moment I had with that lady. Hmm. Um, I can tell you about it if you like in a minute. Um, moment number seven. Sorry, number six, <laughs> before we get to the final one. Yeah, this is the one that, this is what we women do, persist, the moment of persistence, where you choose not to give up. And sometimes giving up is actually the right thing to do, but you will know when persistence is what's called for, when this is the moment where you dig in, you dig deep, and you keep going. And so that's moment number six. And the final moment, and it's, you know, I think this has to be my favourite moment. So I'll just pick this up, I think. I've got the other instructions cards in the deck. Um, moment of perfect contentment, yeah. So, you know, and these are these are moments where you connect to your achievement and um, reaching your goals. And I think often we don't acknowledge our moments of perfect contentment. And I'll show you mine because it, it, it's just it's just I think people might find that a bit amazing what my moment of perfect contentment is. So my moment of perfect contentment is sitting in my kitchen with my husband, and my kids and just talking and exploring our days, what's happened. Because it usually starts, like, I'll be in the kitchen and one of the kids will come in and they'll be talking to me. And then the other one will come in and they'll be talking to me. And then the third one will come in and we'll all be talking and laughing. And then my husband will join us and we'll just be in the kitchen, mm. laughing and talking about the day. And it's in that moment I feel totally content. You know, nothing's happening, there's nothing spectacular, but it's just being able to connect with the people that you most love in, your, in, in, that, in that safe environment of my home. And I, 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 I do feel most content in those moments. So mm. the other thing that goes with the moments is your music. So each of the moments is anchored in a song. And what I ask people to do is to choose a song that they associate with that moment, either because it was playing at the time or because they've come to associate with that experience. And so when we go through the moments, we talk about the moment, we explore the learning um, and the lessons that they had and just, just what it meant for them, what it told them about themselves, you know, usual kind of coaching. <laughs> <laughs> approach mm. and then we say what's your song and why have you chosen it then we play the music and it's just like wow it just makes the experience just so much more connected because you've anchored it with the song you know you can take that song to your heart so, th so that's basically the process and um, the ebook explains it in a bit more detail and gives kind of like more of the background to it and um, a workbook for you to work for it during the day mm -hmm. um, day by day and as I said, the cards are so you can select your moment. And they're very pretty. I like them. <laughs> and you can shuffle them and set for number four. Let's keep number four in the middle. And then decide what order you want to, to work for your moments. And part of it is like 
doing your momental, monumental ones. But then when, you, when you're stuck in the day thinking, what moment is going on for here, for me here? And this kind of like, um, um, a little moment that you can mark. Um, am I in a moment of clarity? Do I need clarity here? What can I find to be clear in this moment? Or maybe this is a moment of darkest despair. And how can I overcome that? Because I know it's going to pass. So it's, it's that, that's the process. Um, hopefully I've explained it. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone to understand. <laughs> so you have a, have a really interesting process. And walking through the individual seven steps is really enlightening as far as kind of how your path has gone. And it's also reinforcing. How do you suggest that people use this once they've gone through it um, and built a playlist of music, because I think that's important, uh, you know, how how does that carry through to kind of their day to day lives? How do they put it into action? So so I think the, the first thing is to do do your monumental moments, the ones that have anchored mm -hmm. who you are today, because that that's really what talks to the self inspired success for you to look back in your life and think, well, actually, let me just gather what's been going on for me because we do this we're very dismissive you know it's, uh, and I think women are particularly good at this in uh, inverted commas even good well you know you'll do something really amazing and you'll go no nah, there's nothing <laughs> just move on and you, you don't acknowledge that moment of perfect contentment that moment of success you just dismiss it so I think one of the things I ask people to do is look out for the moments. I call them marking your mini moments. So during mm. the day, look out for those moments, the moments that, that, that empower you, like the moments of um, perfect contentment. Look out for the people who are um, your passion and connection. Because sometimes I think one of the things we don't do is see the opportunities that are around us. So, you know, um, I always say to the people when I'm coaching them in the business, one of the, the things that you can't do to build a business is have a small business mindset is to think, like a small business is to think like there's lack to think like money is a problem because mm -hmm. when you do you just set up this dynamic and um, i read this study and i used to it was in hertfordshire in england and there was this professor because i always say to people i know if you're very scientifically minded or if you like evidence you know that this may not appeal to you, you might think it's mumbo jumbo but here's the science okay so this professor decided he was going to study luck you know, some people think I'm lucky and there's opportunities and other people think they're not. So he said he was going to study luck. So what he did was he asked people to, to volunteer for the study and asked them to define whether they felt they were a lucky person or an unlucky person. So you obviously people come in, oh, I'm really lucky, oh, everything goes my way and I'm always winning lotteries. Other people, I'm never lucky and never win nothing, you know, but a thousand raffle tickets and the only one that comes up is the one I didn't own, that kind of mentality. Anyway, so then what he did, he devised an experiment. And in, what the experiment was, was he took a broadsheet newspaper. I don't know if you have those there. They're not the little tabloids, but the really big broadsheets like the Financial Times, you know, the big ones. It's a huge paper. And he bought, put in a quarter page advert. Or was it half page? A big advert. So the advert was big. And it said, tell the researcher that you've seen this advert and claimed your 200 pounds. And then he said to everyone, right, so we're seeing how much people notice in newspapers. And we want you to go through the paper and count the pictures. So, you know, just all the pictures in the paper. Just count the mm -hmm. pictures and tell me how many pictures you see. And everybody who said they were lucky went for the paper, saw the advert, told the researcher and got their 200 quid. And all the people who said they were unlucky didn't see the advert. <laughs> At least you never saw it. And he thought, well, what the hell's going on on here? And so, so his science was that actually if you tell yourself these negative thoughts, you set up a dynamic in your physiology. Like, so you're more anxious, your, you know, your heart rate's um, higher, your eyes, blood vessels are more constricted, you're less observant, so your peripheral vision is, um, isn't so much. So, mm -hmm. so just anything about the way you are makes you miss opportunity. And on top of that, then there's that disbelief. Oh, this can't possibly be true, mm -hmm. so I won't act on it because you have a pessimistic outlook. Whereas all the lucky people think, well, it's worth a chance, <laughs> chance isn't it? 200 quid just for saying, I saw this ad, why not try it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is it's your mindset that really impacts on what you're going to do each day. So one of the things you can do with these cards is use them to make sure that you stay in the right mindset. So wh where, are you, where do you need to be awakened to your purpose? You know, what's going on for you today? Do you need some more clarity today? You know, each day, um, where am I going to look for the clarity for my purpose? You know, when I'm in a moment of darkest despair, how can I go back to what I did before and draw that strength? What, what mm -hmm. got me through last time? And that, those kind of things in terms of looking for the opportunities. And I do think 
that the other exercise I suggest people do is at the end of the day, because one of the things is I believe in is giving thanks. You know, somebody once said, if the only prayer we ever said was thank you, that would be enough. And often, uh, you know, I, don't, I, I think we don't acknowledge the, the, the fact that the universe is truly on our side, you know, and mm. if you don't acknowledge it's on your side, you get what you then put out, which is it not being on your side. So at the end of the day, what was your moment of perfect contentment? Which one of the moments you're going to celebrate? Take a couple of minutes, just note down what you did, almost like keeping a journal of it. So you can use this to take through the day and, and pick some more songs. It's always mm. fun to pick another song. <laughs> you know because it's actually quite hard when i say to people pick seven songs and they go oh i've got nine songs i've got 20 songs i can't choose so you're gonna have to pick pick a song choose a song and so <laughs> everyone's got, got more songs so here's your opportunity to add more songs to the mix and and music is i, th- I think we i think that um well i suppose when i was younger my parents thought the same thing that young people hijacked in the music <laughs> Mm. <laughs> but they haven't really the music's still out there you can still go back and forth and youtube's amazing any song you can ever think of you know even, oh it's even there the, the jingles from your childhood the television shows and the adverts do you remember when you see like the jingles you mm. can find them on youtube <laughs> so whatever you're looking for is there so you can always find some music that inspires you uplifts you empowers you to get on with your day because I don't know about you, but this 2016 is is proving to be a really challenging year in Europe. It really, mm. really is. Um, around the so world. We, around the world. We, we kind of need to look to um, the things that are going to make us vision a brighter future. Because I'm a great mm. believer in the power of visioning something different for bringing about change in the world. And if we all get drawn into oh it's terrible if it's going bad it's end times then that's what we'll experience so well you get what you focus on yeah exactly so there's so Mm -hmm. much more that we can we can have out there and we can vision out and i think the moments are one way to do it look at all the moments that are happening every day that are inspiring Mm -hmm. out of the seven there's only one moment of darkest despair and all the others are moments that are inspiring and uplifting so yeah, I think I think having some form of gratitude practice is even more important now than than it ever has been before, because, you know, when there are dark times, when we encounter things that, you know, we just don't know how to deal with, then having some of uh, the things that we can be grateful for to fall back on and to really understand how that gratitude practice helps us. Uh, it's it's hugely important to understand that. And I think, you know, the idea of the the seven moments is huge because it helps us remember that it isn't always the darkest and helps us have places to draw on, to go back to. And, you know, we need that. Everybody needs that. There's no one in the world, I think, who doesn't have, you know, a dark time when they need to be able to remember you know, what it was that sparked them or what it was that brought them back. Uh, you know, that's that's pretty powerful stuff. Um, do you do you talk to people about maybe creating a diary? Um, do they keep a journal? Yes. Yeah, so is in, that part in, of your process? In the book, in, in the ebook, the back pages are the workbook. So each day mm-hmm. is um, the day. So they write their moment on a day and then there's a series of questions that they answer about that moment so they can they are keeping a journal and they can repeat that mm-hmm. I've, I've even um created the process to deal with your relationship so there's a way in which you can use your, the process to look at how your relationship is working and mm-hmm. if you download the book you get that as that that process too so it's just a series of different questions and looking at the moments in your relationship you know because someone once said to me the easiest way to fall out of love <laughs> No, actually, it starts like falling in love. So everything the person does, you make it huge and big and wonderful. So I just love the way you brush your teeth. And isn't it cute the how you just leave your toothbrush on the side? And it just shows there's a man in the house because you leave the seat up all the time. And now you're in love. And when you're not in love, gosh, why can't you put the lid on the toothpaste? Mm. <laughs> Every time I go to sit down, the toilet seat's up. And it's the same set of circumstances, just you not remembering how you initially started to connect to that thing. And using the seven moments to say, well, okay, what was your moment of awakening to this person? When did you spiritually connect to them? When did you clearly know what your purpose together was? Okay, Mm. so you've had darkest moments, but what was the darkest? And how did you come back for that? Because if you can think of the darkest and you come back for that, then you can come back for anything. And so, you know, so the journaling very much is very part of it. Uh, um, 
the process starts um, in, in the download with um, a guided meditation. Because I think it's very important for you to, to, to start in a, a place of tranquility and stillness. Mm -hmm. One where you're not judging yourself. Because it's the easiest thing you can do is to reflect on your life and then go back and beat yourself up about it, you know. <laughs> no. Right. <laughs> and when we do that, you know, <laughs> you know, I'll just look at it through that I was useless glasses <laughs> and, mm. um, and make my whole of my life terrible. And so it's really just, you know, the guiding meditation is to get you to a place where you, you're connecting to your deeper self, your, you know, your, your authentic self, the self that I always say that we always always are, despite mm. what we choose to say about ourselves, despite what we choose to do, despite, despite what people decide to label us, you know, that beautiful being that we are born being, um, you know, that's connected to everyone and to the source never changes. We, we just kind of put on lots of baggage. And so the meditation is to help you get back to that place to say, let me start here. Let me start from a place of connection and tranquility. So that when I look at my moment, I'm looking at it through eyes of love. I'm looking at mm. it through eyes of compassion and not, and not, and, and, and non-judgment. You can evaluate things without being judgmental. Yeah. So, the, you know, so the idea that you can't look, um, um, with learning eyes, with, um, um, the eyes of that for feedback, you know, looking for information about is, is, is you can do that without being judgmental on yourself, without condemning everything. It's about being open and accepting that that's where you were and you did the best you could with what you could at the time. And that's all that you can, anyone mm -hmm. ever do. So that's what the meditation is um, designed. And the process for. isn't really about judgment. It's about noticing. It's about absolutely. awareness. Yep, absolutely. So how can we transfer that awareness to business relationships and how we deal with our customers? So, so I'm fidgeting because I'm sitting on the grass and things are now on my feet. <laughs> you got a dog? <laughs> I've got two cats which aren't here at the moment. But yeah, so the ants are biting my legs. So that's why I started to fidget. I'm just laughing. Anyway, so how we can, so the most important part of any business is the business owner. Okay, that's it. You know, if you ever, over here, we've got a program called Dragon's Den. I don't know if you've got it then. You know, mm -mm. okay, so what it is, is um, entrepreneurs go in front of dragons, you know, so they're investors and they pitch their business to them. And um, one of the things. Oh, I've here been, it's called Shark Tank. Oh, no, okay, Shark Tank. <laughs> yeah. have got a lot of sharks there. <laughs> Right. George and the dragon. Yeah. So our, our, our nemesis is the dragons in, the, in Europe, but you have sharks. Mm. Yeah. Shark tank's a good idea. So, yeah. So, you know the idea. And, <laughs> and what the, um, the entrepreneurs are looking for is the credibility of the business owner, somebody who, who can actually, you know, it doesn't matter what numbers you give someone. If you haven't got the, that credibility, if you haven't got that self belief, if you haven't got that passion in yourself, if you haven't got that kind of entrepreneur spirit, you know, you, not to say you're a maverick, but you're prepared to take which you're prepared to give it all then they don't back them so you know you see people they come with these great ideas and they think no nah, i don't want to be in business for you you you, know, you haven't got that mentality so how we can take this into our business this is about making sure that you are fully you now and it's really hard to be in business if you feel like an imposter trust me <laughs> you know what I mean? if everything you if every time you go to a network meeting you're sitting there thinking oh, they're going to buy my idea, you know, okay, I think it's good, but, you know, maybe they're going to see through it, or I haven't, I haven't crossed all the T's and there's a couple of I's I've got to dot, you know, it's not perfect. Oh, no, that, and so you don't want to talk about it, and even if you do want to talk about it, you know, I was, I was saying to my, my son, I have a 16-year-old um, son, and he's, he, he uh, we, we think he's going to go one of two ways. He's either going to solve ca cure cancer, or he's going to be Genghis Khan, Mark II, you know, <laughs> one or the other. <laughs> Keep watching it. So he's over. He'll come up to me and say, and say things like, "Oh, you know, he he he's, he can pretend to like people," and I always say to him, "You can't pretend because we as human beings have that inner sixth sense, and we pick up through nonverbal communications things that are just subconscious. And if you mm -hmm. don't believe in what you are saying, even if you've at a surface level convinced yourself you have, and you've put on an act, you know that kind of whole thing, fake it till you make it." isn't about lying to yourself. It's about stepping up and getting on with it until you, 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 you um, acquire the, the trappings that you need, yeah? It's not mm -hmm. about lying internally to yourself. So if you can't go there and be authentic, if you, you've got all these judgments about yourself, if you don't believe in your own success, if you believe you're an imposter, you don't do well in business. 
and you, mm. you know, you, you just keep going around in that little spiral looking for why am I not, why am I not successful, you know? Um, and then you look for different business techniques and all the rest of it. But it doesn't matter what any technique somebody gives you. Somebody could give you a million pounds in your business today and set up your marketing and all the rest of it. If you as a business owner haven't got that belief in yourself, and I suspect if someone gave you all that, you'd think, oh my God, why did they give it to me? They're going to find out I'm an imposter. They're going to realize they've wasted their money, you know, talking that. Mm. Then it's not going to work. So I, I think very much this is very much about getting you as a business owner to be the person who can run your business that you believe can run your business because all the work I was doing before when I was doing it kind of separate it did a lot of the times I'd, I'd end up coaching business on social media and we'd end up just doing coaching you know just talking mm. about what was stopping them taking action because I you know we'd sit down we'd talk about their marketing we'd talk about what they needed to do and you know what they're going to do on their profile and all their blah 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 next session well, have you done it no <laughs> Okay. What's that about? <laughs> Why are we here? <laughs> Why are we here? You know, I get it. Things get in the way. Yeah, totally get it. But it must be more than that because at the end of the day, if you want to get something done, you get it done. You know, mm. that's what people just do. And it, then, so it goes a bit deeper. And a lot of it is to do with they didn't quite believe it was going to work. They didn't believe that they had the capacity to do it. They were, you know, they didn't want to put themselves out there. And I think a lot of it for women of my generation, particularly, and maybe the people who do not the millenniums because you know so we look at today's generation and they live their life on social media it's just fine i don't mind being public you can see everything about me my whole story is there i saw this video the other day about this woman uh, this girl she's 14 and her little sister was free caught her in the bathroom changing her sanitary towel and started crying and she was really upset about it and she's posted this all over social media now <laughs> i'm obviously approved because i was horrified you know what i mean i didn't grow up like that <laughs> That's the whole idea. <laughs> We're gonna publicly announce that on to anyone other than first of all, I wouldn't even tell my mum. So so it's a completely different mentality about um our values in terms of what was private and what was out there. And so that's a big ask for a lot of people. So we're not saying you have to change all your values, but actually if you believe that what you're offering is good and can be out there in the public, you're gonna find it easier to deliver it. So you don't have to be you know, put my life on, on on social media, but just put your business on social media. And a lot of women I find find that difficult because their business is them and they don't want to be seen mm. because they don't feel that they should be seen for whatever reason. And a lot of it is to do with not believing that what, you know, if I can hide behind my business frontage, no one sees me, that's cool, yeah? But business today is about no like trust, it's about knowing the entrepreneur, especially with a small business. So if they don't see you, um, then you're at a disadvantage. So uh, I think a lot of it is this is about helping women to be seen as well. Well, don't you also think that, um, you know, we expect businesses to be so much more transparent now. And if you don't represent your business in your social media accounts in the way that you are online, then we may not trust you enough to do business with you. Oh, absolutely. Do you know, it is so easy to be, a fake person online you know mm. you see, they got those adverts where they they, um, they particularly usually do it for um um to warn children and they'll, they'll show somebody talking to somebody they think there's a child and they've got everything all the trappings all the pictures and, you know they go to people go to a lot of effort to defraud mm. people it's not that mm -hmm. oh i'm gonna take five minutes they'll put up a website that, you know, but actually, if you're there in person, if you, you know, your social media accounts are showing your life, that's more effort than most fraudsters are going to go to. Mm. So, you know, so seeing the real you, you, you're taking like a live stream on um, Facebook, seeing the real you um, in your business, in your business environment, being authentically you, talking about what you have to offer and the benefits that you're giving people. People now think, actually, you're a real person. Out of all the mm -hmm. millions, you know, a third of the world is on social, on, online now. A third of the world, there's, there's a lot of people. Of all those people, how do I know who's real? How do I cut the noise and find real mm. people who are not scammers? Who are not just trying to, you know, you, you don't have to look in your inbox every day and see everybody's pretending to be business, trying to defraud you or something and send you lots of emails. So you have to be seen, really. Um, mm. It's changed. Before, you could be, hide behind a big corporate image and, that actually gave you credibility. The bigger your company looked, the more credible people thought you were, you know, back in the day. Mm. I say back in the day. Um, so, you know, people always wanted to be corporations. They didn't have personal names for business. In fact, back, you know, not too long ago, marketing schools used to teach, you you know, don't personalize your, your name. You know, who's Joe so-and-so? 
You want mm. a name that represents your company as a brand, you know. Hide behind a logo. Hide behind a logo. But nowadays mm. we say, well, actually, you just need to be yourself. People need to see you. They need to understand who the business is. And that's a big shift. And especially mm-hmm. if you grew up with the hide behind the logo kind of mentality, then it's going to be hard for you to step out of that. Mm. I think anyway. I thought I found that- it hard. I think it's been very hard and, and, you know, it's been a big shift for PR. I mean, there are people who do social PR and there are the ones who do the traditional PR. And I really think that not to say that all PR is like that, but I think there's a lot of cowardice where, you know, they're hiding behind a press release and Mm -hmm. carefully crafted stories Mm -hmm. rather than actually letting us see behind the curtain. And -hmm. it's just too easy now to look behind the curtain. So, you know, we need to be, present. We need to be paying attention and we need to understand who we are and who our company is in order to be able to put a real face forward as opposed to hiding behind the logo. Oh, absolutely. Or, or, or just being fake. And it's so mm. easy to get caught cool out these days. You know, I mean, it's not even worth the effort. Did you see, um, was it M- Milana Trump's speech? Have you seen all that? Go- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just hilarious. You think, Oh, come on, you know. And what's worse is Donald Trump introduced her with the same words that Obama introduced Michelle. <laughs> yeah, the plagiarism story is all over here. That's all anybody can talk about right now. Did they, but did they it, think it's, no one was going to notice. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's wild. It really and, is. There's nothing a- more polarized than American politics right now. <laughs> It's the same thing happened to um, um, Andrea Letzum over here. You know, mm. she, 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 you know, everyone embellishes their CV. So she kind of embellished the CV a bit. And then people just looked her up. And, and it doesn't even matter if you, so this whole idea of PR that you can keep mm. quiet what you don't, you know, I think they're stuck in the, in the 50s when the studios controlled everything, you know, so we're, nowadays we're finding out things like Rock Hudson was always gay and this person had a child, you know, and, and no one knew because the studios were like the KGB, they just clamped it down. It wasn't out there. Now, <laughs> 30 seconds, it's across the globe. So you have to be kind of, I don't know, really living on a different planet in a different time to really think that you can get away with being inauthentic and selling a, a story to your to your followers, your people, they let's just find you out. And then and 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 on top of that, the internet is very unforgiving. You know what I mean? If you if you transgress, oh, yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> it's almost very sort of biblical, you know, you transgress and you're rotting hell forever. We're never gonna forgive you. <laughs> social media hell forever. Yeah, social media hell. Mm-hmm. So uh, so it's really worth being honest. And do you know what? I would say to my kids, it's so much easier being you, because one, no one else could be you like you. And it's just easy. You don't have to pretend. You don't have to make stuff up. You don't have to kind of think what you said last time. You just be you. And right. how, how free and liberta- liberating is that? Just wake up every morning. I'm going to be me and my business. I'm going to do what, you know, because there is somebody out there who wants you. Who wants you no other way and no one else but you. You are the solution to their problem in the way that no one else can provide it. And give and the wonderful thing about social media today and being in business in this way today is that you've got access to the billions of people online. It doesn't matter where they are. As long mm. as you've not got a physical product that actually needs to be in a local local location, you know, you've got access to the globe. And even if you're local, you've got so much more access to the people in your calendar than you need you did before when you had to do the flyers and you know, you just had the shop and who was gonna walk past your front, you know. Your locality is, is bigger. So, you know, it, it gives us so many opportunities. So I think women really need to be able to take them. And if what's stopping them is not believing in themselves, not wanting to be seen, and I can do something to change that, then, you know, <laughs> I'm all for that. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think what we bring to our businesses is a sense of self and a sense of authenticity and, and finding ways to carry that through is just hugely important. Oh, yeah. absolutely. 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 Well, Ola, it's been really great chatting with you. And I, I would love for you to let people know how they can find you and how they can download your book. Okay. So if you, um, I was going to see if I can put something up here. If you um, um, go to my website, my website is www.elanmedia. And Elan is spelled with two E, so it's E E L A N M E D I A.com. And, um, 
if, if, so if you go to my website on, on the front page there's um all the blogs and there's a blog article about this right on the front page so that's quite easy to find so i was gonna say forward forget that just go on and just look it's on the front page also terribly you can connect with me on twitter i'm always on twitter always tweeting out links to it and i'm just me on twitter Ola Agbamoni. So if you start typing OLA AGB, that's it. I'll come up because, you know, and I'm instantaneously recognizable because I've got the way. <laughs> My niece said to me yesterday, Auntie, why don't you have any hair? I said, Oh, because I just don't, darling. She went, Oh, never mind. That's <laughs> so sad. I, felt, I said, Well, I don't mind that, not having hair. She said, I don't like short hair. <laughs> She's only seven. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm easily recognizable, even if I haven't got my glasses on. So yeah, so you can see me on, and I'm also on Facebook and I'm me on Facebook as well. In fact, anywhere I am on social media, I'm just my name, or like my name. So that's standing in my power, just being me. Um, so if all my handles, like the business detective, the coach in the moment, whatever, are all after my name. And so I'm not on them as those things, I'm just on as Ola um, Agme. So you can connect with me on, on my um, um, Facebook, on my Twitter, on my LinkedIn, I'm on Instagram. I'm also on chat, Snapchat now. Oh, great. Because <laughs> I had to join Snapchat because my son, the oldest mm. son, went on holiday and he didn't contact anyone. No postcards, nothing on Facebook. So I messaged him, I said, to him, do you know what? Back in the day, people used to send postcards saying, wish you were here having a great time. What's happening? And no Facebook update. And he said, Mom, I'm on Snapchat. It's all on Snapchat. <laughs> Great. What's, what's Snapchat? <laughs> so I had to join Snapchat. Oh, yeah. So just to stalk me, son. So, yeah, so I'm on Snapchat as well. So I'm just getting used, looking for business use on that. Um, so, yeah, so I, I, I have a presence. On, and I'm on Tumblr too. You know? I still like Tumblr. Mm -hmm. So I'm still. Well, that's great. Great. Well, everybody, please check out her website and follow her on Twitter. She shares a lot of really great information and the book Thank is you. still free to download as an ebook. So you should take that opportunity to do that. Oh, absolutely. Because it will not be free forever. I was just no. putting it out there to let, to, you know, seriously, I thought, well, let me give it away to start with. And then the gate will close. And mm. so, you know, possibly the gate will close at the end of July. <laughs> So you've got to the engine line to download it for free. And then after that, you're going to have to download it with a payment. <laughs> so get it, get it now. Get it while it's hot. <laughs> get it while it's hot. <laughs> well, thanks again, Ola. This was really fun. <laughs>